everybody. It's Josh RV Nerd with Bishes RV here with the MPG 2500 bunkhouse model. Um, this is a floor plan that, like, you've probably seen something like this out there before. It is slightly bigger than some of the other ones I've seen, but not the largest. It comes in 29 foot 11 inches, so I can with a clear conscience say it's less than 30 feet, but basically 30 foot family camper. But uh, what they did here is instead of giving it the same kind of sofa dinette super slide that everybody does, they moved the fridge over into the slide and expanded the kitchen because a lot of bunkhouses have really crappy kitchens. And this is one where if you're a campsite cook, you can actually feed the family in this thing. And they also extended the dinette a little bit. So it's got a pretty big dinette area. They are using Asdell under the fiberglass. It has a huge front pass-through compartment and they're easy cleaning. They're carpetless and ventless all the way through. They do this really interesting thing up in the bedroom where it's a 72 by 80 king bed but it will slide off to the side to make uh, like if you want to be able to actually get dressed in your own bedroom you can do that and they even left just a little bit of butt scoop boogie space to do the sideways travel trailer two-step to get around the foot of that bed even though it is a private bedroom so there's a bunch of things they could have done to, to make it a little bit smaller lighter probably less expensive but I don't know that it would be as good as what we're looking at right here. The belly is enclosed, so it's got a, uh, and forced air heated, decent extended season package, not like some mega Arctic extreme deal. It's solar ready plug and play, but you're gonna look at it today with an optional 190 watt solar package on top of there uh, as well. The other thing that really kind of caught my eye on this one was the, uh, the bathroom, strangely of all the things, they just added an extra vertical enclosed with a, with doors linen cabinet in there that most manufacturers just won't do or they'll just leave open face storage and hopefully your stuff doesn't fall on the floor in transit. And maybe I've been playing a little bit too much Mario Kart lately here, but um, that looks a lot like a Koopa shell. By the way, anytime my nephews say they can beat me in Mario Kart, I just laugh in 250cc. The thing that kind of strikes me on this one every time I step into it is like I have a certain expectation I think shaped by the fact that it has a 25 at the start of the model number. I'm expecting smaller and when you remember that tip to tail the RV is actually 30 feet it helps put it into perspective but when I see a dinette only slide I'm not expecting a big open space but by including the refrigerator over there in the slide. I also like those USB plugs by the dinette, by the way. But by including that big 12-volt compressor fridge, that's like a 10.7 cubic foot variety right there, big one, uh, be before you get to the big, like, multi, double, triple, quadruple doors like you find in some big, giant fifth wheels or whatever. My point is, it opens up the floor space dramatically. And when they did that, by, by getting the fridge out from, like, the main kitchen section... They were able to extend the uh, the kitchen countertop to actually give you some prep space. Like, if you look at a lot of similar campers, they'll have, like, two overhead cabinet doors and then the microwave. This adds that third one. You're gaining, I'm shooting from the hip, 12 to 15 extra inches of horizontal kitchen right here with storage above, below, and counter space in between. That ain't nothing. That's, that's useful. That is very, very handy. Your kitchen power outlets, by the way, are under the overhead cabinets. They're just not super, super visible. And I do like that they still maintained a pantry. Like, they didn't try to get cute, stupid, and get rid of the, uh, uh, the pantry entirely to, to trick you into thinking the RV's bigger. It still has all those good, necessary details. Um, your kitchen and dining countertops are a sealed edge thermal foil. There's a couple little things like this entertainment center over here is T-molded, but... You're not really going to be probably, you know, having any water around that area. You might notice the heat vents coming off the sides of things. You won't find heat vents in the floor. And I do like how they went with the uh, the floor matching carpetless slide system right here. It just makes the whole RV look, feel bigger, cleaner. It just looks better, in my opinion. The barreled ceiling up top here also helps open things up. You got to be careful. The marketing is like, we have a six foot 10 ceiling. Well, yeah, at the top of the barrel, but it's six and a half foot on the side wall. It's a four inch barrel. It's not insignificant. You shouldn't ignore it. It just, it, when you say six foot 10 ceiling, I think you think it's that size all the way through. Oops, I left the sink cover sitting on the, uh, the dinette booth bench in case you were curious. Actually, let me back up a little bit because this dinette has an interesting kind of thing. Um, when I first tried to personally slide into it and like I felt like it was really tight but then I got down here and I started looking at it and maybe this isn't the best camera angle to showcase for you but where the mounts attached to the table is asymmetrical the uh so if you want the table to stick out a little bit like this to leave some more room for a, a big bellied American dude like me in the back bench you can do that if 
you don't want that, if you want to keep it out of the way as much as possible, you can flip it around the other direction. So you kind of have a little bit of a choice there. Our bunks are 300 pound rated, by the way, and uh, they do each have a fully ventilating window. One off the back, one off the side. They do the, the bottom bunk off the back because you have a camp kitchen door over here and they want to make sure the window stays functional. Now, the uh, upper and lower bunks both have these little like phone pockets, but you're like, yeah, but I don't see any outlets. It's easy to miss. I don't even know how well it's going to show up on camera here. But if I get you all the way up in the corner, you might be able to see where there is a USB plug built right onto that outlet. But the other thing is, notice how I can reach the outlets here. Now, it helps that I'm tall and have long arms because that one is back there pretty far. But the idea is that mom and dad, if you need to, can reach the lights. Now, I will tell you, I, as a kid, what I would do, I reach down and turn it on and off with my toes. And boy, I, I'm telling you. That would probably annoy my mother. Don't kick the lights. And, you know, kids think they're not hurting anything, but the fact is, you think it's cool, you're like, whack! Look at that, I kung fu kicked the lights on, ma! And, uh, you know, that's camping, man. <laughs> the uh, toilet space here, for righties like me, it was a little tidy, but it was all right. It was adequate. I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that here. Something else I really liked is that, again, the linen storage space here in the bathroom. Campers like this, most of the time, just have a big old blank wall right there. That was kind of a nice feature to find. Also, because the shower head's on the uh, the, the apex of the ceiling vault, uh, well, not vault, uh, barrel, technically a different thing, but you get the idea. The arch, I thought it was... Yeah, actually very friendly to somebody like me who's a little bit over six foot tall. There is, by the way, a full on, uh, you know, medicine cabinet over here in the corner. And obviously you saw I was getting ready to take a snack bite on that vanilla scented um, <laughs> bar of soap over there. Now backing up a little bit here, I want to dive into this dinette. Because it at a glance you're like, okay, and it's a dinette, whatever, I get the idea. Yeah, it folds down to a sleeper. But there's a couple other things that it does as well. Like there is storage all the way below it. Um, it is a pedestal style table. So it is potentially a bit of a knee knocker. You want to kind of keep that uh, measured up into the equation. But it's got this flip top storage on the side benches. And what that can allow you to do is uh, more easily access those areas. And uh, like, especially if, if you have cargo all the way to the back of those side benches, you can reach it. Now, the rest of the kitchen stuff seems pretty straightforward, but again, there's a couple little surprises like that oven. First of all, they're including an oven where a lot of manufacturers have just deleted them, but it's also an air fryer oven. So it's a, it's a dual function fixture. And that's kind of cool. You know, they're, they didn't subtract. They actually enhanced where a lot of manufacturers are getting rid of things. And something else I wanted to kind of address with this video, if you look at the floor plan at a glance, it's you're like, oh, this is a 90 degree neck record television. And kind of, yeah, let's be fair about it. It is, it's not a direct facing entertainment, but this is a, a model that is a bunkhouse that only has a dinette. I don't know that TV viewing is necessarily the most important feature of this floor plan. I don't know, like if you're like, I don't super care about entertainment. Well, it'll be good enough on a rainy day where you could like, you could park yourself over in the corner of this thing and use it like a lounge, kind of like I was doing just now. Or if you're like trying to feed the kids and you need a few moments to keep, keep them distracted, you can pop on some SpongeBob and you'll see the kids and me sitting over there and, uh, you know, just kind of keep keeping themselves entertained for a while. Now, look past the TV and look in those bedroom doors. Looks real funky, doesn't it? You've got the bed all the way against the wall on one side and then nothing over here. I, I thought I'd go about this a little bit differently today and demonstrate their gliding, sliding bed system. Uh, the idea behind it is in this private bedroom, while yes... There is room to kind of tiptoe around the bed. It's not terrible. It's not super duper tight, but it's it's not like just walking through a hallway. But it's not really the kind of space where I think you can get dressed. That's why they do this, because they have a 72 by 80 space hog king bed up here, and they want to make sure that you still had a spot to get dressed. So that bed can literally slide from side to side. And I'm going to see if I can manage to pull one of these with my chicken arms in real time in a minute. But real quick, you got these little hanging pockets on the sides of the hanging wardrobe towers. Both sides of the bed have household and USB plugs, which is kind of cool. And those plugs had those white stickers on them. 
Uh, that is actually telling us that they are wired up to the uh, inverter prep of the RV. That's something I don't think I've talked about a lot on my previous MPG videos. Uh, apologies there. Now, you've got some good overhead cabinet space, but it is the gravity drop auto close variety with no sort of struts or anything like that. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, real quick, as long as I am already standing in here, I'm going to spin you around like a record baby a little slow and uh, get you over here just so that you can see that, yes, you do have TV hookups uh, up here next to this thing. Now, I've never attempted this on camera, and I'm probably going to have to have the camera super up close and personal to do this. But if you want to move the bed, there's handles on each side. All you do is pull it. Like, if I can do it with one hand, I'm sure you can too. And there is a lock mechanism over here. Uh, I don't know if I pulled the bed over far enough for you to see it. Uh, yeah, actually, kind of right there. Let me finish pushing that out of the way. There is a little lock where you can uh, keep things in place right there. I do like the cross breeze windows, but you might have noticed they're using the uh, pleated shades all the way around with these. Uh, Wait a minute. Do you hear that? Anybody else hear the white stripes on this thing? Do 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 For towing talk, um, with a maximum GVW uh, under 8,000 pounds and a total tip-to-tail length right on 30 feet, it has some half-ton towability potential. It will depend uh, specifically on the capacities of the exact truck in question as well as your towing intentions. Where are you going to take it? Wind zones and elevation changes naturally become more difficult to navigate, so those may you know, encourage you to get a little bit bigger vehicle. Power tongue jack up front here, but what I want to actually showcase for you is this black box with all the wiring coming out of it just below the, uh, the stone guard right here. That is what they call the vault. Um, if you've watched any of my like Keystone videos where they have a thing they call the Giggy Box, uh, it's basically a it's a vastly superior wiring system as opposed to having all the old school relays exposed to the weather out here. I've seen faulty relays just causing uh, a, a whole number of problems for potential people uh, down the line because like, you're like, well, sometimes my awning goes out, but sometimes it doesn't. Like relays can really get weird when they get exposed to weather. And this, it, it, it solves that problem really uh, is kind of nice. Battery disconnect protected in here. And uh, that black box just above it is a prep for a TPMS system. If you do want some tire pressure monitoring for uh, heading down the road. Now just for um, clarity and candor sake, this is running on import tires if you're gonna tow casually short distances like I tend to they're fine the thing to remember um, on a lot of those <coughs> pardon me <coughs> joke down thin air <coughs> oh geez <coughs> I think I'm gonna die okay there we go finally cleared up thing to remember on a lot of import tires a lot of times they're fine as long as you use them as intended the thing is sometimes those intentions are not what we're expecting the biggest hiccup with a lot of import tires is typically the fact that they often have lower speed ratings as compared to like a Goodyear tire or something like that so if you are somebody who likes to put the hammer down and full send brother you may want to upgrade the tires if you're just kind of towing around town some people just like hey I just I got a, a, a uh, you know a campsite that I visit frequently here in town that I pop in and out of, well, maybe this would be fine for you then. But again, food for thought. Uh, if the shoe fits, you know, I don't know, wear it, change your sneakers. I don't know what the case is. Uh, the camp kitchen out here doesn't have any sort of sink situation. It does have a, uh, a, a cold water sprayer port connect over here, and it does actually include the hose and the, the sprayer handle for it. That's in that brown box under the bed. I forgot to bring that out here. I'm sorry, but it is included with the camper. I like, though that the, uh, the griddle still has some dedicated counter space next to it. And if you really wanted to, nothing says you have to have that griddle. Now, it is factory standard. The griddle and the fridge are standard, but if you wanted to remove them and just have a slide out thing and some storage, you could totally do that too. That's totally up to you. Four corner power stabilizers, big power awning. I'm gonna, you know, like, there, there's some areas where I think you could criticize this RV. There's a couple things they didn't do or maybe could have done a little bit better, but 
There's also some really good qualities here, like that giant awning is that's that's good content, man. That's something that you're gonna use every single time you can. By the way, the underbelly is enclosed and forced air heated. Also, the layer right below your fiberglass on your uh, your walls that is Asdel. Uh, in case you were curious, if you don't know what Asdel is, uh, it's a uh, wood substitute that weighs less than wood, and the material itself is waterproof. What I didn't just say is your whole RV is waterproof. I said that one layer of the sidewall is waterproof, so that's an important differentiating factor. Obviously, we got that telescopic removable ladder prep mount on the back there. Doesn't include a factory ladder, but with that mega front storage, you got space for it. Thanks again for tuning in. Please keep in mind, the price tags that you're seeing, sorry, I, it's hard to, the weather person pointing like in a green screen and stuff like that, like it's it's a little bit tricky. I have a newfound respect for them after making these videos. But the price tags that you're seeing on the all over this RV are for this show at this display with some incentivized uh, help basically from the factory to make that happen. Mm, chances are, uh, once this initial batch sells, it will probably uh, not be that price anymore. But to help you determine that, I'll always leave you a link in the video description where you can see if we have one in stock and what we're asking at any of our stores anytime. And when you're ready, we're ready. And until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.